You can be notified of selection for a test at any time, for example, at an event, when you're training, or are at home. All testing conducted by the National Anti Doping Organisation in the UK meets the requirements of the international standard for testing set down by the World Anti Doping Agency. If you've been selected for doping control, you'll be approached by a doping control officer, a DCO, or chaperone. Hello there. My name is Richard Driscoll. I'm a doping control officer. Nice to meet you, Richard. How are you doing? Is Very it Simon? Well, yes, it is. Great. Just notifying you that you've been selected for a urine test and a blood test today. OK. You... After introducing themselves, they'll officially notify you and verify your identity before proceeding to completing the notification section of the sample collection form. Do you have any identification with you at all? Please? Yes. The DCO will also communicate to you your rights and responsibilities. Okay. Thank you very much. If you can't report immediately to the doping control station, you may request a delay to complete certain specified activities. These, as well as your rights and responsibilities, can be found on the 100% Me website. Please note that you'll be chaperoned at all times. Shall we go through to doping control station? Yeah, let's go. Great stuff. Welcome to the doping control station. First On arrival at the doping control station, you'll be taken through some further sample collection documentation. If I could ask you to make yourselves comfortable, take some drink, and when you're uh, ready to go to the toilet, please let me know. OK. Hi, Richard. I'm ready to go to the toilet. Great. In which case, can I ask you to choose one of the blue lids and also a white-topped pot, please? Yep. And also, check that you're happy that they are sealed and secure. Yep, they look good to me. Also, prior to providing a sample, you need to either wash your hands or wear a pair of gloves. Which would you prefer to do today? I'll wash my hands, thanks. OK, right. In which case, this way to the bathroom, please. As an athlete, you're in control of the process and can ask questions at any time. OK, if you'd like to put your pot and your blue lid on the side sure. here. And for this part of the process, we need uh, you to lift your clothes to your mid-chest and also your mid-thigh. So we've got a complete and unobstructed view of you providing the sample. And also, we need you to roll your sleeves up. OK, I'll take my top off then. The doping control officer's role is to explain the procedures and instruct you through the process. They do not need to handle the collection kit at the sample provision stage. Remove the security strip from the pot. You just pull the white tape off of the collection vessel there. It'll leave a slightly sticky residue behind. That's it. There's a little tab just at uh, the back of the pot. There you go. Peel that all the way around. If you want to open the lid and pull the lid and the collar off. That's it. Great stuff. If you want to rest the pot on the top, you can get yourself sorted out. Alrighty then, once you're happy, we're aiming for 90 mils as a minimum. If you provide less than 90 millilitres, then the DCO will instruct you on the partial sample procedure. When you're ready to provide more urine, this will be mixed together until at least 90 millilitres is provided. OK, that's enough. If you want to rest the pot back on the top there, you can get yourself dressed now. OK, good. Now we'll need to seal this sample and take it back to doping controls. We'll use the blue cap. If you want to take the plastic off, that's it, and just put it on top of the collection vessel and push down till you hear a loud click. Great. Let's go back to doping control and split the sample. Fantastic. OK, good stuff. Firstly then, can I get you to put your sample on that pad? Take a seat, make yourself comfortable and tell me, let's agree how much we have in here then. From the bottom of the bubbles, 150 mils? Yep, that looks good. OK, so I'll record that on the form. Now then, it's to split the sample into two bottles. So can I ask you to choose one of the white boxes in front of you? If I could ask you to lift that up and the lid will automatically open. That's it. At this point, you need to wear a pair of gloves. I'm going to ask you to put those on. All right, now if I can ask you to remove all the contents from the box, please. You'll be offered a choice of at least three sample kits. You should check that the kit has not been tampered with and that the sample bottles within are empty, clean and intact. If you're not happy with the kit selected or they're damaged, then please report this to the doping control officer and select another kit. 
So we've got some numbers to check now. On the hinge here is a label, and I'd like you to check that the number here agrees with the number on the lid, the label, and the barcode of each bottle. Yeah, it looks good to me. If you could pull the drawstring down, the orange drawstring on the plastic, to remove that plastic. The doping control officer will instruct you on dividing the sample between the A and B bottles. Once sealed, you'll be asked to place the bottles into plastic bags and into a polystyrene box. The DCO will check the suitability of the sample for analysis by using a refractometer. If your sample is out of the acceptable range, you'll be requested to provide an additional sample following the same procedures. OK, now is for the declaration. You'll be asked to declare any substances, supplements or medication you've taken during the past seven days and or any glucocorticosteroids within the past month. Provide details of any therapeutic use exemption you may have in place and include any comments or issues you have on the procedure. You'll then be asked to check the whole sample collection form thoroughly. Once you're happy all the information is accurate and correct, sign the form. Finally, check your name is not on the form that goes to the laboratory and keep your copy in a safe place. In signing the form, you agree that the information entered onto the documentation is accurate and your personal data will be processed through Adams. You'll be given the option of consenting to your sample being used for research purposes. If you've taken part in any form of physical activity before the blood sample collection procedure, you'll be asked to be seated for a period of time to allow your body to return to a rested state. Simon, this is Verna. She'll be looking after you for your blood sample. Hello, Simon. Pleased to meet you. Only a person qualified in the collection of blood will be able to perform the procedure. If you'd like to choose one the blood collection officer will offer you three blood sample collection kits from a choice of at least six. You're also required to choose one blood sample storage kit from a choice of at least three. Is there any medical reason, Simon, why I can't take a specimen of blood from you today? No, no, whatsoever. You don't have any clotting disorders and you're not on any medication at all? No. That's fine, thank you. Now, I'm just going to undo one of your packs. I'm Simon. The BCO shall assess the most suitable vein for sample collection and clean the area. This is usually from the arm, but can be from any suitable vein in the body. The BCO will then insert the needle and attach the vacutainers and withdraw the blood. No more than three attempts will be made per session. Nice and firmly, thank you. I'm just going to invert your bottle, Simon, to stop them from clotting. Now we're going to undo your box. Inside your box will be six labels, each with an identical number to the side of the box, the lid, and the side of each bottle. The BCO will then apply a label to each vacutainer and hand the spare ones to the DCO, who will then add them to the sample collection form. And this sticker is spare, it's for you. Thank you. You'll then be asked to place the vacutainers into the A and B bottle. They will then be left under supervision for 15 minutes while the remainder of the sample collection form is completed. You'll be asked to declare any substances, supplements or medication you've taken in the past seven days and any blood transfusions in the past six months. The DCO will ask you to check the sample collection form and to sign it once satisfied the information is correct. Werner, then, could I ask you to come and just sign to certify that uh, you've done this procedure correctly? You should check your name is not on any documentation going into the laboratory. This completes the blood sample procedure. The sealed blood sample should be kept in the doping control station at a cool but not freezing temperature prior to dispatching for analysis. What to remember about doping control. Familiarise yourself with the testing procedures and your rights and responsibilities during testing. Always carry a form of photo identification with you for the purposes of notification. When notified of a test, stay in full view of the chaperone or DCO to protect your integrity and reputation as a doping-free athlete. 
Keep a list of medications, supplements and substances you're taking so you can accurately record them on the sample collection form. Ask doping control staff if you have any questions regarding the sample collection procedure. Record on the sample collection form any concerns you have with the test.